<laughs> Greetings, peons. It is I, the instructor of Talaria State University, and I am here to present to you some additional deliciously devilish combos for the commander format that will make your opponent scream in agony at your utter oh, no evil. <laughs> Oh my, did my phone go off during class? How perfectly evil of me. <laughs> evil instructor here. Yes, yes, the Goblin Raiders are playing now. Yes, of course I'll be there. Bad day to you. <laughs> Ugh, cannot believe I have to do this, but singles, singles, singles! It's showtime! Ah, it's the evil little boy! Oh, be quiet. I've just been informed by Talaria State University's dean, and yes, we have an actual dean, not just a musician in a surprisingly nice suit, that I must be present tonight at the match between Talaria State University's Goblin Raiders versus Mirror Universe Strixhaven's uh, whatever ridiculous name their team has. So I need a substitute and I'm picking you. Wait, 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 wait. There's a Mirror Universe Strixhaven? What's that campus like? All the students are kind and support one another in their academic pursuits? <gasps> Does that mean that my universe's Strixhaven is the evil Strixhaven? Do do I? Anyway, think of this as an opportunity for you to dip your toes into the evil waters of despicable combos. <laughs> I don't know if I'm interested in doing that. Well, then maybe you should just think of this as a job that- A job? I'm in. Uh, that, that, that pays. Oh, snap. Now I'm really in. Ugh, adjuncts. Pathetic. Anyway, make sure that these combos are as evil as possible and that our ad integration is doubly so. All right, well, it looks like I'm the new instructor and we've got an ad for something evil. Oh, no, wait, it's NordVPN. It's just something for when you want to do evil or when you want to protect yourself from evil. It has so many applications. Take control of your internet experience today with NordVPN. Right now you can get a two year plan at a huge discount, plus four additional months for free when you go to nordvpn.com slash Tolarian community. It's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. Don't you just hate hackers? I mean, I liked the movie Hackers, but it turns out in real life, hackers are bad, unlike the movie, which was really cool. Well, NordVPN says that they're the greatest at protecting you from hackers, again, not the movie. So if hackers are giving you trouble, then NordVPN, why not the link click? And you know, they've got a strict no logs policy, so they're not gonna track you, which <laughs> believe you me, on the internet, that's, that's a good thing. And they won't share your private data because it's private. Uh, it's none of their business. P2P is welcome here, and hey, there's worldwide access with over 5,400 servers in 59 different countries. So choose NordVPN today. Thanks again for sponsoring this video. This evil video! All right, I see that the instructor left notes with the word evil underlined pretty much in every sentence, but I like to bring something of my own to the lesson plans. So while these commander combos are indeed evil, I really want to focus on finding some under the radar combos that maybe you and your playgroup haven't really seen before. Let's begin with my first combo, Mirror Bout, which revolves around the two card combo of Mirror Sheen and Turnabout. When Turnabout resolves, we have the choice between artifacts, creatures, Creatures and lands. When we make that choice, target player taps or untaps all permanents they control of that choice. Let's say we just have lands at our disposal for this scenario, so we would choose lands, target ourselves, and choose to untap those lands we control. If you have the required amount of colored mana in artifacts, then choosing artifacts over lands is perfectly logical. Mirror Sheen requires a bit more attention, as it's an enchantment that reads, spend one generic and two hybrid of blue or red to copy target instant or sorcery spell that targets you. You may choose 
new targets for the copy. For this combo to work, you will need seven mana, and you will need to have at least four blue mana or two blue and two red mana to properly enact this combo. First, cast Turnabout, target yourself, and hold priority. Next, we activate Mirror Sheen to copy Turnabout. Provided our opponents have no responses, we let the copy of Turnabout resolve, untapping our lands, and then activate Mirror Sheen again before we allow the original Turnabout that we cast to fully resolve. This should create a loop of infinite mana and an infinite chain of Turnabout copies. Now you can be as evil or as fair as you like with this combo, depending on what you want to do with it. Some of the more classic ways to win would be a large burn spell that can deal damage to multiple targets, such as Rolling Thunder or Fireball. Or perhaps we'd prefer a card draw spell such as Blue Sun Zenith, Stroke of Genius, or Prosperity to win the game with blue. Be careful though, this could potentially result in a draw. And you wouldn't want that to happen, ha <laughs> ha. We can also use these blue spells as finishers for our next combo, Channeler Chain. Like our previous combo, Channeler Chain is a one-time infinite mana combo that only lasts for one phase in a turn. This combo uses the long-time forgotten Chain Stasis, an instant for a single blue that reads, you may tap or untap target creature. That creature's controller may pay two generic and a blue. If the player does, they may copy this spell and may choose a new target it for that copy. Well, what better target than the Homeland's Mana Producer Extraordinaire, Wirewood Channeler. Wirewood Channeler needs to tap and make at least four mana, so we need a minimum of three additional elves on the battlefield for this combo to work. Keep in mind that Wirewood Channeler adds mana for each elf on the battlefield, not just your own. With three additional elves on the battlefield, we tap Wirewood Channeler and make four blue mana. We cast Chain Stasis and choose to untap Wirewood Channeler. We are given the opportunity to pay for Chain Stasis's copy effect, and we can tap Wirewood Channeler to produce that needed mana. Since adding mana is not an ability that uses the stack, we can actively tap our Wirewood Channeler for mana before our Chain Stasis copy resolves and untaps the Channeler, which then gives us mana to pay two and a blue to copy Chain Stasis again. In addition to gaining infinite mana, we can also gain infinite mana of any and all the colors except colorless. How this works is we still have at least one blue mana after copying Chain Stasis. So when we untap the channeler, we can choose a different color of mana to produce, and still have one blue mana to copy chain stasis again. In other words, we can alternate between choosing blue, and then any color, and then blue each time we tap Wirewood Channeler for mana, and keep the infinite copies of chain stasis going. For finishers, we have a multitude of options, including the blue X spells mentioned earlier, and now green X spells alongside myriad other choices. For example, the second acted ability of Kamal, Fist of Krosa. His ability gives all of our creatures an additional plus three, plus three, and trample until end of turn as many times as we choose. So that's just another fun way to win since we now have infinite colored mana. Our next under the radar combo is a little ditty I like to call Meek Echoes of the Wild. This is the first of our two three card combos on the list and it is centered around a triple threat of cards that create a lot of value. Mentor of the Meek, Mana Echoes, and Words of Wilding. Essentially, each of these cards has effects that cause another card to trigger and therefore we have a loop of triggers until we decide to stop. Let me explain. We need to have all three cards on the battlefield and let's say we were about to draw a card. Prior to drawing, we activate Words of Wilding. Now instead of drawing that card, we make a 2-2 bear token. Since we are making a 2-2 creature, that triggers both Mana Echoes and Mentor of the Meek. We get colorless mana from Mana Echoes and we can then use mana to draw a card off Mentor of the Meek. That card draw can then be replaced with Words of Wilding's ability and we create another 2-2 bear token. This time though, when Mana Echoes triggers, we get two colorless mana instead of just one. We can then repeat this loop process as many times as we need while generating an increasing amount of mana and two two bear tokens each time we go through the loop. There are a few things to note with this combo. The first is that if there are no other creatures on the battlefield besides Mentor of the Meek, the first bear token we make off of Words of Wilding will trigger mana echoes and we will gain one mana. This is because when creatures enter with mana echoes in play, they count themselves among creatures that share creature types with them for mana echoes ability. Additionally, mana echoes doesn't care who plays a creature when it adds mana for us. If a creature enters and there are any other creatures we have that share a type with it, mana echoes will count all the creatures that share that type and give us that much mana. This means that if we have a creature with changeling, such as woodland changeling, not only will we receive 
receive at least two mana anytime a creature enters, but more importantly, this will enable us to go infinite with this combo quicker. The second is that we need to pay for Word of Wilding's ability before we draw a card. This is because Word of Wilding's ability creates a replacement effect that needs to exist before we would draw our card. This may mean you will need to account for extra mana in the beginning revolutions of this combo loop to properly get the machine running smoothly. For example, if we have no bears in play, we will have to pay one mana for our upkeep to replace our next card drawn, which is at the beginning of our draw step to get our first bear token. Mana Echoes will give us one mana for either Mentor of the Meek's triggered ability or to activate Words of Wilding again. We will need to spend an additional mana to keep going. Once we have a bear token, enter the battlefield under our control, and there is one other bear anywhere in play, this combo will be running full steam ahead, meaning Mana Echoes will generate enough mana to pay for all our costs each time we go through this combo loop moving forward. If you do not have access to white with your commander, we can also combo off in a single turn using Beck to replace Mentor of the Meek. In white, we just got a new toy in Rite of Harmony from Innistrad Midnight Hunt as a backup for Mentor of the Meek in a single turn with Flashback. Last Lastly, in a pinch, we could also use Kindred Discovery, naming Bear for our creature type, in place of Mentor of the Meek. Note that this is a much slower engine, as Kindred Discovery is a 5-mana enchantment and can potentially kill us because we could draw more cards in our deck than we have when we move to attack with all our bears. If that ever happened, I guess you could say it would just be unbearable. Huh? Huh? Alright, moving on. Our next 3-card combo is also modal in different colors, and it is... Magda's Nexus Seeker. Now, I'm presenting this combo in a Gruul deck, but if you wanted to, we could always drop green and achieve this combo in Izzet as well. In the red-green version, we have Maskwood Nexus, Magda, Brazen Outlaw, and Seeker of Skybreak. In red-blue, we'd have Afeto Alchemist as a replacement for Seeker of Skybreak, as they are functionally the same creature in this combo. This combo seeks to abuse Magda's two abilities of gaining treasure tokens when dwarves become tapped, and sacrificing treasure tokens to search for a dragon card to put onto the battlefield. Maskwood Nexus gives all of our creatures in play and all other zones, such as the deck, all creature types, meaning that every creature we own is a dwarf and a dragon, plus every other creature type. Seeker of Skybreak and Afeto Alchemist are both creatures that can untap themselves with a tap ability at no additional cost. Since they are dwarves, thanks to Maskwood Nexus, each time we tap one of these creatures to to untap themselves, Magda sees a dwarf getting tapped and gives us a treasure token. When we have enough treasure tokens to sacrifice them for Magda's second ability, Maskwood Nexus makes all of our creatures dragons alongside every other creature type. So Magda's ability will search for any creature we choose and put it onto the battlefield. Since this is an infinite loop, given our dwarf is tapping to untap itself, we are gaining infinite treasure tokens and are able to search for every creature in our deck and put them onto the battlefield. This combo can also be done at instant speed like every other combo discussed so far, and therefore if we don't have any additional combo to win immediately, we can get every creature into play at the end of our opponent's turn, take our turn, and then attack our opponents for the win. But now are you ready for our final combo, the most evil of them all that I am here to present? Might not be able to be performed at instant speed, but I call it Hell's Staff. This last combo is simply a Hell's Caretaker equipped with a Thornbite Staff. This combo can only be done on our upkeep, so it's a bit more fragile, but a lot more evil. Protecting Hell's Caretaker is definitely a good idea so that it will survive until our next upkeep. We also need to have at least one dead creature and a creature besides Hell's Caretaker in play for this to work. Once it is our upkeep, we can immediately tap Hell's Caretaker to effectively switch a creature we have in play with a creature in our graveyard. Since a creature is dying as part of Hell's Caretaker's ability cost, Thornbite Staff will trigger and untap Hell's Caretaker. If we choose to, we can then switch creatures again, ad infinitum. This is a very simple but effective engine, and while it does take a bit of extra work to activate Hell's Caretaker's ability, once we do so, it should be extremely easy for us to win the game. And we have such a large variety of different creatures we can use to win the game through this combo. For the purposes of this video, I will keep the creatures simple and to the point. Black has a multitude of creatures that drain life from our opponents when these creatures enter, 
or when another creature dies. Some, but not all of these creatures are Grey Merchant of Asphodel, Cauldron Familiar, Highway Robber, Darkmoor Ghoul, Blood Artist, Zulaport Cutthroat, and Calastria Healer. Draining life is perhaps the most direct way for us to win in Mono Black, but we are not without other options. We can make as many 5-5 Flying Demon tokens as we want with Priest of the Blood Rite, or Food Tokens with Tempting Witch, or Plus One Plus One Counters with Tenured Ink Caster, for example. Goodness, Tenure must be nice to have. The trick is to make sure our setup survives until we reach our next upkeep. If we have access to blue, then Sphinx of the Second Wind is going to make life much, much easier for us, as we gain an additional upkeep after we can equip our no longer summoning sick Hell's Caretaker. So is that combo evil enough for you? Not bad for a substitute teacher, I do say. No, 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 no! This is not nearly evil enough! And your presentation has been an absolute embarrassment. I give it the most despicable grade I can think of. A B minus. Now be gone with you, Hasbro, Hasbro, Hasbro! <laughs> I will be conducting the rest of our lecture today. How bad for all of you. And this next combo is one that will make your friends question why they ever come over to play when you ensure that all games end in a draw. This combo, the professor would tell you never to actually play. And were he here, he would probably say, it's just a funny interaction that I'd like to show you. Don't actually do this to your playgroup. Pish posh. It revolves around two cards, Phylactery Lich and Assault Suit. The combo itself is pretty simple. When Phylactery Lich enters, we put a Phylactery counter on any artifact we own. But for the sake of simplicity, we will put it on Assault Suit next. Equip the Lich with the Salt Suit and pass the turn. On the next upkeep, you can choose to give an opponent Phylactery Lich. The opponent has control of Phylactery Lich, and we have control of Assault Suit. Therefore, we own and control the artifact with the Phylactery Counter on it. Phylactery Lich's new controller has no Phylactery Counters on any artifacts they control. So then Phylactery Lich's second ability will trigger and the Lich will attempt to sacrifice itself. Ah, but Assault Suit prevents the Lich from being sacrificed. So what happens is the Lich's sacrifice ability triggers, does nothing, then immediately triggers again because the Lich still meets the conditions for the sacrifice ability to trigger. This creates a loop of triggers that will never end unless something or someone is able to either destroy the Lich, which is indestructible, or the Assault Suit. So unless someone responds to this interaction, the game will end in a draw, because this loop will never end. <laughs> it's the real world equivalent of crashing Magic Arena. And so ends the lesson. I hope very much this video has been most unhelpful for you and that you shall enjoy inflicting pain and misery by buying these horrible singles, singles, singles. Ooh, ooh, I got rehired. Let's do some evil. Protect yourself from evil today by using my link to sign up for NordVPN. It's just a click away. Using NordVPN is as simple as and intuitive as making your morning coffee. A single account lets you connect up to six devices. So take control of your internet experience today with NordVPN. Go to nordvpn.com slash Tularian community. Risk free with a 30 day guarantee or click the link in the description below. Enough. Fortnite, Fortnite, Fortnite. No, that'll exile <laughs> me forever. <laughs> ah!